Jeff Zwerink here. Welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important intellectual ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. And today I'm excited because I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Ken Samples, and we are going to talk about St. Augustine and existentialism. Ken, good to have you on the program today. Good to be with you, Jeff. So we're going to delve into some philosophical ideas here, and uh, one of those is existentialism. Uh, it seems like this cool ten-letter word. Uh, kind of flesh out what it, what is existentialism uh, from a philosophical perspective. Well, think about that that key word, exist. So existentialism is a philosophy that explores human existence. It's interested in questions like the meaning and purpose and significance of individual people's lives. And uh, it has a rich history. Uh, philosophers, both religious and non-religious, have been attracted to it. So can you give us uh, just some, uh, maybe some uh, opposing views or different ways of looking at it? Because it seems, you know, thinking about purpose and meaning, that just seems kind of second nature. What would people be yeah. doing something other than existentialism? Well, uh, one part of existentialism is the question, why do, why do human beings seem to be lacking fulfillment and satisfaction in life? Uh, what is it that causes kind of human angst and a, a lack of ultimate contentment? So it's kind of an exploration of human psychology. Uh, it's a reflection on on you know, what's the fundamental flaw in human nature that makes humans the, the way that they are? So in talking about that, it kind of seems like, I mean, that, that just sits very, aligns very well with Christianity. I mean, there is a, a deep flaw in human nature. There's reasons why we're not fulfilled, experience angst. Is this a secular or a theistic worldview or, or philosophy? Yeah. Well, I... Partially, it is how it's defined. Let me, let me illustrate that by saying this, that a secular philosopher who is an existentialist would say, um, I just exist, and through my own efforts, my own choices, I create my own essence. I identify my being. A Christian existentialist would flip it and say, no, you, you're born with an identity. That identity is you're made in the image of God, and you can fulfill that identity by becoming a Christian. So the secularist would say, all you have is existence. God can't give you meaning and purpose. You have to do that yourself. So in some ways, secular existentialism is a reaction to a Christian existentialism. So if I get what you're saying, existentialism is exploring the angst and the fulfillment and the purpose and the good and that sort of stuff, where the secular and the theistic might differ on where the origin of those things are. They both agree that they're there and they're wrestling trying to understand them. Is that a good way to look at it? And who has the better explanation? And maybe a bit of a historical context. Secular existentialism really exploded Right after World War II, I mean, Europe, European civilization is devastated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard to find an intact building in an entire town. So, you know, this was a very depressing time. This was a period where people thought humans aren't, uh, you know, humans are not altruistic. <laughs> Look at all the death. Right. So, uh, so how, how are we to find meaning? in a world that, that seems in many ways to lack altruism and lack goodness. So is this a dominant theme in philosophy? I mean, are there lots of people who've done this, or is this kind of more peripheral or, or niche, if you will, in, in philosophical thought? I, I think, uh, well, I would say, for example, Soren Kierkegaard, the, the great Danish philosopher, he kind of lived an obscure life. Nobody really knew him or his writings other than people who had contact with him. But by the middle of the 20th century, a, a, a century after his death, everybody knew Kierkegaard. Hmm. So I think there have been forerunners of existentialism, along with some very influential 20th century existentialists. And, and again, I think because it's about the identity of human beings and their purpose and their meaning, I think it, it attracts people secular or religious. So I, I know uh, you've written a blog that talks about this and that there's a connection between existentialism and, and St. Augustine. Yeah. Um, and I know you like to talk about St. Augustine. Sure. So what is the connection and why is St. Augustine being connected to this important? 
Well, you know, we, we often think that maybe Soren Kierkegaard in the 19th century is the father of existentialism, or maybe in the 20th century we think the French philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre is the ideal existentialist. But many of these themes that are attractive to both religious and non-religious philosophers you see in the writings of St. Augustine. In his book, The Confessions, which is kind of his autobiography, he talks about angst. He talks about limitations and our fallenness and how life is not meaningful with, without discovering God. We find rest and peace for our soul in God. Some people have said, look, uh, these, are, these are major philosophical themes. And Augustine is already, you know, in the 5th and 6th century, 4th uh, and 5th century, he is already looking at these. I think it's fair to say Augustine had an existential mindset. That's pretty remarkable because he's predating the folks you're talking about by a millennia. You know, so the fact that he's wrestling with those um, and, you know, kind of flesh it out a little bit. But I think he plays a prominent role in Christian thought, if you will. Absolutely. I mean, all of the existentialists know Augustine. I mean, Soren Kierkegaard was a fan of St. Augustine, Blaise Pascal, fan of Augustine. But, but even, uh, even the secular people, uh, Derrida... Uh, uh, Sartre, all of these people uh, read St. Augustine and they were aware of him. So, you know, here is a book that uh, created the genre of the autobiography and he's still speaking to people and even some people who are, who are not dedicated Christians as he was. So kind of touch a little bit about, uh, on St. Augustine's connection to Christianity. I think you said he was a 5th century uh, British monk, if I'm correct. Or His dates are 354 to 430. Okay. He comes out of North Africa. Okay. That's where he is born. Uh, I would say that St. Augustine is arguably the most influential Christian thinker outside the biblical authors. Now, that's a big statement. That is a big statement. But I would say, for example, that uh, it, it, it may be the case that Augustine influenced pr Protestants just as much as he has Catholics. He's not as well, it, he hasn't influenced the Eastern Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, quite as much as the Western Church. But Augustine's influence is profound. He influenced Anselm, he influenced Thomas Aquinas, he influenced Luther, Calvin, uh, Ken Samples, uh, <laughs> the names go on and on. Well, I mean, those are pretty prominent people in the, in the, in the history of the Christian church. So that, that is a pretty remarkable thing. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your comments, Ken. You bet. You know, often when people look at the Christian church and Christian thought, they there, there's this perception that Christianity is kind of intellectually shallow. And, and what I find interesting about this discussion with Ken about St. Augustine and existentialism is how profound existential thought is in the philosophical community and the fact that it traces back to St. Augustine who lived many, many centuries ago and had profound influence on the Christian church. It really does show that Christianity has a profound, deep and rich intellectual history that goes to it and a faith that actually flows out of that intellectual history. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org. Ken's written about St. Augustine and existentialism. You can look up St. Augustine and the philosophy of existentialism. It'll give you a great blog that helps you understand not only St. Augustine, but the influence he had on existentialism and on us, everyone here today.